To visit the sense is a sign of loving those whom Allah loves. The blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines. To visit the sense, to visit the sense, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines. Today we are going to visit the blessed shrine of such an individual who did much zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that the people even began to call him crazy. He was an Egyptian. He traveled far and wide. This is none other than Hazrat Zunnun Misri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The fishes, they rose from the sea. Not one fish, not two, not five, not ten. Possibly thousands of fishes. These fish had a jewel in their mouth, ready to give it to Hazrat Zunnun Misri. I am currently at the blessed feet of this noble individual, the great Thoban ibn Ibrahim, the great Hazrat Dhunnun Misri. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Salatu wa Salamu ala Sayyid al Anbiya wa al Mursaleen. Amma ba'd, fa'a'udhu billahi min al Shaytan al Rajim. Bismillahi rahman al Rahim. Salatu wa Salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Reviewers of Madani Channel Welcome back to another episode in which we visit the blessed shrines of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal we are currently in Alexandria that city which was conquered over 2000 years ago, about 2400 or so years ago by Alexander who's known as Alexander the Great, Alexander of Macedonia. And we have in front of us, we are in the northernmost area of Egypt. Uh, in front of me, I can see right in front of me, the Mediterranean Sea. But my dear viewers, that's inconsequential. Because Alhamdulillah, the place we have come to visit is the blessed shrine of not one but two great individuals over here. This beautiful building you see behind me, one which is the immaculate building, which is the masjid also, and as well as the resting place, the shrine of Hazrat Abu Abbas Al Mursi. Now, many people would be thinking, I've never heard of him. I know somebody you have heard of. And this is Hazrat Imam Busayri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Immediately the Qasida Burda Sharif is coming to your mind. Yes, my dear viewers, Hazrat Abul Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu was that individual who inspired and he was also the teacher of Hazrat Imam Busayri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the writer, the famous poet, the one who composed the famous Qasidatul Burda. And Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi who inshallah in this episode today we shall be hearing much more about them inshallah Namadi viewers of Madani channel Alhamdulillah we always begin by listening to a virtue of sending salawat upon the greatest of mankind Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam the beloved messenger Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam has said that that individual who recites the root upon me ten times, then his ten sins shall be forgiven. His, he shall gain ten blessings and his rank shall be elevated by ten times, my dear viewers. Alhamdulillah, there are many virtues in sending salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And mashallah, today inshallah, we shall be hearing about Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi. This is their masjid, their mausoleum, and above which it says, Uzkurullah, that mention the name, do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also the zikr of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Let's go to the masjid itself, we'll hear a little and even see uh, the masjid itself, inshallah, from the 
inside and we'll also hear a little more about the life of Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. To visit the sands, to visit the sands, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam Alhamdulillah at the shrine of two individuals, two great individuals One Hazrat Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the second Hazrat Imam Busayri radiallahu ta'ala an Now inshallah first we shall be speaking about the life of Hazrat Abu al-Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala an I've also been gifted a book the Qasida al-Burda my day viewers of Madani channel. Now, Hazrat Abu Abbas Al Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we think, you know, we hear of the Qasida Burda, we think they may have been a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago. My dear viewers, they lived about eight hundred years ago. Hazrat Abu Abbas Al Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was actually a Shazli, he was a follower of Hazrat Abu Hassan al Shazli. And it said about him that he was born in round about 617 AH. 617 AH, which is the 13th century in accordance to the Gregorian calendar, about 800 years ago. He was born in Murcia. In Murcia, hence the name. Abu Abbas Mursi. So this ending of Mursi, the reason he's given this name or the reason why he's known as Mursi means he's Mursiyan, meaning he was born in Murcia and Mursi is in Al Andalus. It is in nowadays Spain, my day views of Madrid Shalom. At that time the Muslims were in Spain, but then life was getting very difficult for the Muslims. Many Muslims had to leave from Spain and they came southern, they came south towards other countries such as Al Maghrib, Morocco, Algeria, wherever it may have been. It said about Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi anhu that he was born to a noble family. He was born in a quite a rich family. His own father was a tradesman, he was a businessman. They had their own business, they were settled in Al Andalus in Spain. And he, at a very, very early age, he began working with his father, he began supporting his father. And he said that the majority of the profit they would gain, they would spend on the poor. This is how generous they were, that most of their profit would actually be given to the poor people. Now, as to the reason why they left some scholars state, it was due to the difficulty upon the Muslims at that time. Later, there's the Spanish Inquisition. So some state this was the reason. Some scholars state that, in fact, when he was a little older, you know, up until the age of 25, this was in 640 AH, his father and his family, overall, they had decided to go and perform the Hajj pilgrimage. And in them days, they wouldn't go on planes, they would go on boats, on ships. So they boarded the ships. Now, even before this, my dear viewers, Hazrat Abu Abbas Al Mursi, he was a person who he, Subhanallah, he was a pious Muslim. We can say he was a very, very pious person. In fact, he was famous for his truthfulness. He was always truthful, and he was very trustworthy. Now, when I read about his seerah, about his life, I read these two important things, and Subhanallah, it is beautiful. His truthfulness and secondly his trustworthiness that he was both truthful and he was trustworthy and subhanallah being muslims being followers of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam undoubtedly these should be two integral and fundamental etiquettes which every muslim shall should possess rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam himself 
was famous for these two great things. One, that he was a Sadiq. And the second, al Amin. He was the most truthful and he was the most trustworthy. So much so that even the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although they wished to kill him, yet at the same time they would leave their own belongings in his care. They would leave their own gold in his care, my dear viewers of Madrid Shalom. Alhamdulillah, this is a brief introduction to the life of Hazrat Abu Abbas al Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, at the age of 24, he went to perform the pilgrimage with his parents and also his brother. Now, in that day and age, they would not travel on plane, but rather they would travel on a boat, on a ship. And he said that whilst they were traveling, they would normally pass by Tunisia. So this could have been one of the reasons because he was traveling on the Hajj pilgrimage. But other scholars state that because the state of the people, the state of the Muslims in Syria at that time was becoming, life was becoming difficult for them. And whilst they were traveling, they came close to Tunisia and there was some sort of problem with the ship. It broke down. And sadly, this cost the lives of all the people on board. But he himself, Abu Abbas Mursi, anhu, as well as his own brother, they had luckily survived and they came towards Tunisia. Now him and his brother remained in Tunisia for a very, very long time. Then Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi, anhu, he met his teacher there. And his teacher was none other than Hazrat Abu Hassan Shazili radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Abu Hassan Shazili radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person who performed many miracles. He is also the founder of the Shazili method, the Shazili way. This was Hazrat Abu Hassan Shazili radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And about Hazrat Abu Hassan Shah Zali anhu, yes, he was at that time in Tunisia, but then he left Tunisia because he was finding things difficult for him to live there. People would say things about him, people would accuse him, they would mock him, etc. For this reason, he traveled to Egypt. Life became difficult for him in Egypt also, and then he returned to Tunisia. Now, when he returned to Tunisia and he had a huge following, this is Hazrat Abu Hassan Shah Zali anhu. It said that Hazrat Abu Abbas, he was also in search for a scholar, for a spiritual guide. And he met a young man and this young man said to him that there is a Sheikh Abu Hassan Shah Zali anhu. He says, why don't you come to him? Why don't you meet him? He's a great saint. And Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi anhu, he says, give me some time. Let me think about it. And SubhanAllah is beautiful, my dear was really, that what does he do? He goes and he performs istikhara. And this teaches us the importance of istikhara, SubhanAllah. Really, it is, it is you know, istikhara is something which should be done regularly. Anything, any task you are about to partake, any journey you are, about, you are about to embark on, you should perform istikhara. So what does he do? He also goes and performs istikhara that night. After performing the istikhara, he goes to sleep. When he goes to sleep, he has a dream. And in his dream, he sees that he is climbing a mountain. He is climbing a mountain. So as he was climbing the mountain and when he reaches the peak of the mountain, when he reaches the top, he sees that there is a person dressed in green. He has somebody to his left and somebody to his right. And as he moves closer, as he approaches, the person wearing the green clothes, he says that you have found the leader of this age, referring to Abu Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then Hazrat Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, upon waking, he met that young man and he says to that young man, take me to your Shaykh. So he goes to Abu Hassan Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And when he approaches Hazrat Abu Hassan Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, then this is exactly what Hazrat Abu Hassan Mursi states sitting in the same place. That you have brought 
the leader of this age and then he asked him what is your name he tells him what his name is my name is Ahmed ibn Umar ibn Muhammad al Mursi and he tells him is his entire lineage and this is how he meets his grand sheikh Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala anhu and this completely changes his life inshallah we shall be hearing a little more about the life of Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi radiallahu ta'ala an sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam to visit the saints the blessed shrines the blessed shrines the blessed shrines the blessed shrines he said that Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi who he had actually informed a friend of his own passing that two days or so before Abu Abbas Mursi had passed away, he approached a friend of his. He hugged him and he was weeping. His friend of his, when he was hugged by him, he also began to weep. And he says to him, what is the reason for this? Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi he says, that I shall now go to see my brother. I shall return for one night in Iskandariya, in Alexandria, and then I shall go to my grave. My dear viewers, one night he goes to see his brother. Then he returns, he spends one night in Alexandria, and then he passes away. This was Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi of Alexandria. Follow me. We shall hear a little bit about his life, and then we shall perform dua at their blessed shrine. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. To visit the saints, to visit the saints, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines. To visit the saints is a sign of loving those whom Allah loves. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we are now at the shiran of Hazrat Abu Abbas Mursi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a great ascetic, a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody who in this place in Alexandria, Egypt, he had been teaching for over 40 years. Alhamdulillah, there were many miracles which have been attributed to Zat Abu Abbas Mursi, who even his own teacher, he praises him so much. One of his teachers, he said to another sheikh, to another saint, Zaki Ardeen, he says, it's necessary upon you to remain with Hazrat Abdul Abbas Mursi. Keep his companionship. Always remain with Hazrat Abdul Abbas Mursi. Undoubtedly, he was no ordinary individual. He said that once Hazrat Abdul Abbas anhu, that he was with a group of shuyukh. They were all awliya of Allah. You know, all great saints, great sheikhs. And he was sitting with them. They were speaking about piety. We're speaking about what are piety, what is piety? They asked him, what is piety, O Abu Abbas? He replies, piety is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you from sin. This is all he said, subhanAllah. He said they were invited to go and visit a person, you know, in his garden and to go eat there. So they all got up, they went there to eat. They did not have the direction, they did not know where the place was because the host himself was not present. But he just invited them to go there and eat. So they went and where they thought was the correct place, they, they thought that, you know, this is the person's place, this is his garden, let's just eat here. There were fruit on the trees. So they sat down, they took some fruit and they began to eat. One person ate, a second ate, the third ate. Bul Abbas Musi, he also tried to take some and place it to his mouth. As soon as he would reach his hand out, he would get a intense, severe pain in his stomach and then he would move his hand back. And then again he would place his hand forward. Again the pain would return, he would move it back. 
He tried a few times and then after that he gave up on eating. Suddenly a man comes and this man says, Oh you people, what are you doing? Who gave you permission to eat here? And that they had in actual fact come to the wrong place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had protected him. This is true piety. Subhanallah, this level of piety is something we can only attempt to imagine. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. To visit the the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines. To visit the saints is a sign of loving those whom Allah loves. To visit the saints is a sign of loving those. The sense is a sign of loving those whom Allah loves. The blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines, the blessed shrines.